Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today I am following up on a video I made about the best button locks for every budget. And as I was going through my comments in that video, I had a viewer suggest, would you please do one for crossbar locks? And I thought, well, heck, why didn't I think of that? Because that's a fantastic idea. And then I started going through my crossbar locks and I realized I had just about as many as I did button locks. There's not quite as many crossbar locks in my collection as button locks, but I do have quite a few. And what I'm noticing is there is still a nice spread from the budgety side of things to the mid end to the high end. I got a whole spread for you and I have a really good list of all of these knives, again, coming straight from my my collection, my vault, my holdings to, to bring you guys the content and knives that I just really, really enjoy. So uh, this is going to be a good list. And again, we are breaking it down into different budgets. We are going to do $69 and under, $70 to $100, $100 to $150, $150 to $200, $200 to $300, $300 to $400, $400 to $500, $500 to $600, $600 to $700, $700 and we even got one in the 300 plus. So slightly different price categories, but a good rundown to go through. And again, I got a knife for everybody on this list. If you like crossbar locks, let's get right into it. But of course, if you guys like lists, if you like reviews, if you like, uh, if you like my content, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, uh, follow along, and I will continue to bring you content because I'm gonna close this year with a bang, I guarantee you that. We got some great stuff coming for you guys. But let's hop into the list. The first, the first one on the list is this guy right here. Now I wanna say, this is the only knife on the list I have a piece of paper of. Everything else is the actual knife to show you guys. So the only reason I don't have this, this here is the Best Tech Man Ronin. It's coming in at 52 bucks with 14C 28N steel. And in all honesty, I loved everything about the quality, the action, the feel of this knife. Best Tech Man sent me like the ugliest possible version of this knife known to man. Um, it looked like Spider-Man crapped it out. It was like a bl blue thumb stud, a red handle, a black blade. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was ugly. Just the, the colorway was ugly. Um, this knife is phenomenal. By far and away, the best knife in the $50 range for a crossbar lock, in my opinion. I, I love the blade shape, I love the steel, I love the, the ergos, the, even the clip's really nice, the action's on point. The Best Tech Man Ronin is a fantastic, fantastic knife. Um, they just have some ugly versions of it. They also have a lot of really good looking versions, like this version right here, just black G10 and a, and a stonewash blade. This is, that's my cup of tea right there. I love that. Um, and they have some other really nice colorways as well. Um, black blade with like OD green, all sorts of stuff. You guys can look them up. It's a fantastic knife. I would highly, highly recommend this one. It's a great beginner knife for a crossbar lock if you want to just get into things in a very budgety uh, version. That's about as good as you can get right there. We'll move on now. And now we got knives to show you. And uh, up next here is actually another really good one. Uh, this is the Vosteed Raccoon. And these are actually still available. A lot of people complain Vosteeds are never in stock. Uh, this is easily one of the best Vosteeds. This model here, the, the Raccoon in general, is probably one of my three favorite Vosteed models. It's It's excellent in terms of a true EDC. The ergos are great. It's got a nice tall flat grind. Uh, very, very smooth crossbar lock action on this one. And for 59 bucks, guys, 59 bucks, it's very, very hard to beat. The only knife that, that really gives it a true run for its money, in my opinion, was the Best Tech Man Ronin you just saw. Um, so a phenomenal knife. Uh, 59 bucks, I think I said for this guy. 14C28N, that's what I didn't say, the steel. 14C28N steel. Um, it's excellent. You got about a 3.25 inch blade. Um, again, nice carry, very, very smooth crossbar lock action and very nice ergos. One of the better ergos for a budget knife with a crossbar lock, you can get the Vosteed Raccoon. Let's move on to our next one in the $69 and under category. And that is none other than a Kershaw. We got a Kershaw and this is the Iridium. If you're a Kershaw fan and you haven't checked out the Iridium, the Iridium, what is wrong with you? You gotta check it out. This thing is, 
I'm not even the biggest Kershaw fan in the world. I don't dislike Kershaw. Uh, they're decent. I just feel like they have more misses than hits, in my opinion. This is a hit. This is a home run for Kershaw. Uh, phenomenal, buttery smooth action. Great, great design aesthetics. Nice blade shape. D2 steel. Uh, 65 bucks. This is easily one of the best Kershaw's ever made. Um, great to fidget with, great to, of course, use and use hard. And uh, yeah, very, very smooth operator. Very nice offering from Kershaw. One of the best offerings from Kershaw in quite some time, to be honest. Uh, so very, very nice knife here, the Kershaw Iridium. Next up, we have our last knife in the $69 and under category. And we're ending on a very good note because it's another Vosteed. This is the Vosteed Corsair, and I believe this is the newest Vosteed, with the exception of the RSK AOS. But in terms of a budget Vosteed, this is the newest one, and it varies much right around the same size as another knife you'll be seeing later on in this list, the Hogue Decca. Um, very nice, smooth action, pops right out. Love that elegant drop point blade. Nice micarta handle, contoured, feels good. Uh, definitely get some Decca vibes here. Nice clip, and of course, most importantly, very, very smooth crossbar locks. What I look for in a crossbar lock is the tension and the overall smoothness. Because sometimes, if the tension's too much, the smoothness of the knife can really be destroyed. Uh, the Corsair walks a very fine line with that because this is one of the more uh, stronger crossbar locks in terms of the spring tension, which is not a bad thing, like I said. They're, 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 they're walking a fine line, but they haven't crossed it. It's still very enjoyable. Uh, running on the bearings, it's very smooth. And it really is a tension level that I really do enjoy. Uh, a couple of these knives I wish had this type of tension. They don't. They're a little softer. But uh, this one here is phenomenal. And it is available. And a lot of these knives are available. Every knife you've seen so far up to this point in the video is available. And, of course, there's going to be links for all of them down below. So be sure to check those out. And uh, using those links really does help support my channel. And, of course, I greatly appreciate that. Um, but the Vosti Corsair for 69 bucks, And, again, Nitro V Steel. I don't think I said that. Nitro V Steel on this guy. So uh, very nice steel option and a great design from Vosti the Corsair. And uh, next up in the $70 to $100 category, we're going to start off with another Vosti. Now, unfortunately, this is not available right now. But I did have it in the collection. I do enjoy it, so I want to share it with you guys. And I don't know if these are coming back, though. I'm really not sure. But this is the Vosteed Grind with a Scandi Grind. We're coming in at $75, 154cm. And again, just a, a very smooth operator. Nice ergos. This could be a really good, like, camping knife for uh, for the woodwork and all that kind of stuff. If you guys enjoy wood whittling, wood carving, all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this could be a good companion in the woods, but uh, regardless of whether you're carrying it in the woods or just down the street uh, for an EDC, it is a fantastic blade, uh, razor, razor sharp. And uh, again, just another very solid crossbar lock. I don't wanna say too much about this one because you, know, you can't really get it right now. And uh, that's not really fun for anybody. Uh, next up, we are moving in the, oh no, 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 no. We still have a couple to take a look at here in, in the 70 to $100 category. And this is actually a series. Now what I'm gonna do here, obviously you're seeing the Kaiser Escort here. I'm gonna bring out all the Kaiser Escorts at once. One of the Escorts, this one here, is a little higher in the price range. Uh, this is an expensive Escort. These are nice, cheap Escorts. And we're still talking about knives. We're still talking about knives. Keep your mind out of the gutter, people. Uh, but let's take a look here. The Kaiser Escort coming in at $89 uh, for the Micara versions here. Uh, this is, of course, burlap and uh, just your regular canvas Micarta. 154 cm steel on these blades. And this, of course, has the clutch lock, which you can adjust the strength of the locks. And I actually have adjusted this one to the medium setting. And this one here I have on the strongest setting. And it's really nice how there's a difference. You probably won't see it in the action. I don't think you can see it through the video, but the feel, it's easier to kick that blade out than it is kick this blade out. 
And again, very subtle differences. You got to kind of be a, a knife nut to really appreciate and understand that difference. But it's a really nice option to have. And these knives here, keep in mind, let me remind you all that this Kaiser Escort right here, the first one that came out with 20 CV steel um, and some very nice aluminum handles. So like I said, $89 for these two and 171 for this guy but this was my knife of the year for last year i mean this was this was a pretty big deal i you guys know i love kaiser this is a phenomenal knife and so are these two like there's the only reason this one won knife of the year is because these two hadn't been released yet so there's a very good chance that you know the more budget version i could have very well went with especially when these have kind of contoured handles and these are flat aluminum handles pretty big difference there i do i do, i do actually if i had to pick one right now today i would go with one of these over this more expensive version not because i don't still love this version but because i do like the contoured handles and i mean they're almost a hundred dollars less so you you really cannot go wrong with either one of these but you still have a more premium option if you want a just a kind of a black more stealthy look um this is a still a phenomenal life that i love very much um, but then you also have the budget options, which it's really, really hard to beat a but nice, good, solid budget knife, especially in today's market when everything is so stinking expensive. Um, the Escort is easily one of my favorite button lock knives of all. Er, button lock. Crossbar lock. New video. We're not talking button locks. Crossbar locks. One of my favorite crossbar lock knives of all time. And don't sleep on that model. Next up. We are in the $100 to $150 category, and it's time to drop it like it's hot with the Kaiser Drop Bear in so many flavors, so many options, so many different drop bears. What we have here is the $109 version with my Carta and 154CM. This here is a Mojave Outdoor exclusive, I believe, for like $135, $130 ish, I think. Uh, S35VN or Forest Green aluminum handles. And then you got this beauty right here, titanium handle with a nice little yellow to blue colorway, LC200 and steel. Uh, they're all awesome, guys. And to be totally honest, there's not one version I would recommend over the other. Um, if you're not sure about the Drop Bear, obviously go with the cheapest version. I mean, this is definitely one of the best versions. This thing here, the, the green micarta is just phenomenal. Nice black wash on it. Um, I, like I said, I, I really couldn't pick my favorite Drop Bear, but I can easily say that the Drop Bear is one of my favorite crossbar locks out there. Kaiser does a really, really good job with these crossbar locks, guys. They send you extra springs with the knife. You can adjust the tension on the on the actual lock itself. They really thought it all out, and they have a lot of different designs now. They got the drop bear. They had the escort you just saw. Um, it, it's very, very hard to go wrong with Kaiser right now in the knife industry. They're just they are firing on all cylinders. They're doing just about everything right, in my opinion. And the Drop Bear is a phenomenal example of just that. And we're not done with Kaiser. We have one more to take a look at. And we're going to take a look at it right now because it's actually next up on the list in the $100 to $150 category. And that is the Kaiser Sheepdog, the newest one of the whole group. And this may very well be the best version of the Sheepdog. This is the full-size version. We're looking at like a 3.2-inch blade, maybe 3.25, probably 3.2 inches. Um, very, very nice, smooth action. I am such a fan of this design in general. Um, I didn't think it would ever beat just the liner lock with the blade cut out. And I'm not saying this one is, because to be honest, I'm really not sure yet. But the aluminum handles add that nice little extra bit of girth to the handle. Um, really nice lines. This is a beautiful shade of purple. If purple is your thing um, and you like crossbar locks, this is one you don't want to pass up. Super, super fidgety. Super fun. The, the clutch lock really acts a little differently on this Sheepdog, just with the overall size of it. It's very, very easy to fidget with, very enjoyable. Um, and again, you have all those uh, adjustment options with the thumb studs, the blade cutout, the crossbar strength and whatnot. Uh, you can really 
tune this knife and deploy it however you want. And it is just a great little piece to add to the collection, especially, um, like I said before, there's not a lot of cleaver knives that really get my attention, but man, oh man, this sheepdog has just always been and always will be a winner in my eyes. Um, the clutch lock version is also just a fantastic option for the sheepdog series. Um, if you guys have one of these, let me know. They are available. They are still available. They're a little harder to find, um, but I'll do my best to find any link I can get for you guys. Um, but yeah, the Sheepdog Clutch Lock, if they are out of stock right now, they will definitely be coming back because I know they're a very popular model. Now, it's time. No, darn it. There is one more in this version, in this uh, price category. And this price category is actually a banger because we have Drop Bears, we have Sheepdogs, and now we have Decas. Yes, Hello American Made uh, is on the scene there. You will see a lot more American Made knives from this point moving forward. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, a vast majority of the knives left on this list are American Made. Uh, and starting with the Deca here, you guys know the rundown on these guys. They range anywhere from $135 all the way up to $198. And these I kind of Frankensteined out. So this blade originally came with this knife. All sorts of different things were going on here. But we have here is a Magna Cup blade. Um, this here is a 20 CV blade. So you got those options. And this is easily, without a doubt, one of the best American-made crossbar locks you can get. Um, it's been a while since Hogue has come out with a lot of new knives. I know they had like one or two new releases lately that I actually haven't been able to handle yet. Um, but the Deca is still one of my all-time favorites. Um, it's basically completely eliminated the need of a Benchmade bug out for me. I still own a bug out. You won't see a bug out on this list because I just think that the bug out has really, Benchmade has done a good job of making that knife undesirable. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of leave that at that. Um, but the Deca is different. It just, it feels great. It's super affordable for what it is. And you, again, you just can't go wrong with it. Fantastic American made quality. Nice deep carry clips. Um, really nice blade shapes too. Love this Warncliffe blade. And of course the clip point is always hard to beat. And obviously I have some aftermarket scales here, but yeah, the deck is getting to a point where you can kind of customize it like the PM2, which is amazing. Um, and Blade HQ actually has a super sweet version with Ultum, and I believe it's Magna Cut on the steel. Um, if those are in stock, I'll have those listed. I'll try and list all the Decas for you guys, because if you are a knife nut and you like crossbar locks and you don't own a Hoke Deca, you really should. Um, it To me, it is a... Uh, it's a requirement in the collection because I've obvious I've actually carried my Deca more than probably most of my crossbar lock knives, with the exception of maybe this one here. Next up, uh, and this is actually moving us into the one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollar category. Unfortunately, because this knife used to not be over one hundred and fifty dollars, it used to be about one hundred and thirty five. But what we have here is the Hogue K three twenty. And it is coming in now at 152 bucks for this version, which has polymer scales and S30V blade. And these things go all the way up to $299. But I will say that 299 bucks gets you contoured carbon fiber, uh, CPM 20 CV blade. It is like, I've handled one. I haven't bought one, but it is, oh, it is so stinking sweet. But the reason I haven't bought one yet is because I just... I really love this version. And again, American made, 152 bucks. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to complain about that for a second. Ergos on this, easily, easily some of the best ergos in this entire video. Um, this knife here, I did a battle of the blades with the shaman and I can't, it's been, it's been like almost two years now since I've done that, but, um, it was very, very close. I can't remember if the Shaman won. I'll have to go back and watch it myself. Um, but this, if you want an alternative to the Shaman, if you want a more affordable knife that is just as good as the Shaman, look no further than this guy right here, the Hogue K320. Um, this thing is phenomenal. It can hold up to the hardest tests. It has a fantastic blade. The, the edge from Hogue is razor razor hair whittling sharp 
Uh, very fidgety, very nice middle finger flicking action. Of course, it does that the one time I say it's great middle finger flicking action. It, it really, really is, though. Um, I think a lot of people could attest to this. I think I've turned a lot of people on to the K320, as you should, because it really is just a smooth operator, a beautiful blade, and one of my favorite crossbar locks. And at the end of this video, I am going to show you guys... I'll grab my favorite from each category so you can know my my personal favorites. Um, but these are all so good. There's none of them I would steer you away from. If I would steer you away from a knife, you wouldn't see it on this video. Um, moving on here, we have a little series to take a look at in the $150 to $200 range. And these are the Hogue Ritter RSKs. You have the full-size RSK right here, and you have the mini RSK here. Now, I'm sure you all probably know who Doug Ritter is, but for those of you that may not, he is one fantastic gentleman that goes around the country fighting stupid knife laws so we can legally carry pocket knives. So support that man, and the best way to support that man is by buying one of these at uh, KnifeWorks. These are exclusive to KnifeWorks. And you guys, I am not an affiliate with KnifeWorks. I don't get anything from them. Um, if, if I posted a video and they sold every one of their Ritters based off my video, I would get absolutely nothing. But that's fine because I want to continue to support Doug Ritter because he does a lot for this community. Um, and he's someone that we should all support. And these are just a fantastic knife design. I mean, look at these things. Um, I do prefer the bigger one in terms of Ergo's. Obviously, the smaller one carries nicer in the pocket because it's a lot smaller. Um, it is considerably smaller, though. We'll do a quick little size comparison. Um, huge difference in size. We'll move that up a little closer. Um, but you really cannot go wrong with either one of these. Um, now, these are going to be coming in either 20 CV or... Magna Cut Blade Steel, depending on which version you get. This version here is one of my favorite knives in my collection, but it's sold out, and I don't know if it's coming back or not. They are coming back with Magna Cut. I just don't know if they're going to have these um, amazing milled carbon fiber scales. But either way, it doesn't. you don't always have to have the milled carbon fiber and all the good stuff. Just this knife in general, in any version you get, uh, is a fantastic option. Uh, this blade is actually a little slicier than the big boy. The big boy's a little thicker, um, but they're both excellent EDC knives. And again, American made. Uh, they are absolutely phenomenal, ranging from $150 to $180. Um, I could argue that either one of these is the knife for everybody. I, I think it is just one of the best overall knives on the market. Uh, the Ritter RSKs at KnifeWorks. And next up, we have a, we have a Benchmade, actually. we do, There are a couple Benchmades in this video, you guys. And this is actually moving us, of course, into the higher price category. <laughs> 200 to $250, the Benchmade 940. And I, and I don't care what anyone says about the 940. I still love it. Um, you guys probably all, already all know this, but this is the knife I had in my pocket when I proposed to my wife. So there's a little sentimental value attached here, I will admit. Um, but it's still just a unique design. It's a nice casual slash gentlemanly design that's very, very enjoyable. And it really, truly is. Um, I know there's a lot of people mad at Benchmade right now, but it is still one of the smoothest button locks I own. Um, and there is something to be said for that because it, this is also uh, one of the first expensive knives I bought. And I actually bought this knife, oh God, a long time ago, uh, at least five or six years ago. Um, and I paid like $193 for it. And right now you can still pick these up for $216 bucks at Blade HQ. So they haven't gone up that much. They've actually kept the Osborne uh, the 940 Osborne, very reasonable. So um, I really do think it deserves a spot on this list because I just really enjoy it. And uh, I've had it in my pocket for some very special moments. So that's that, the 940 Osborne. Still one I would recommend. 216, not too bad, S30V steel. Uh, really nice uh, blade and comfy ergos. Still solid knife. It's Wayne Sharple approved. Um, and next up, we have a Giant Mouse. This here is the Giant Mouse Ace Nazca. And this was one of the bigger surprises for me, I, I think, last year. Yeah, last year when it came out. 
Um, I really, really enjoy the crossbar lock from Giant Mouse, and it's actually manufactured by Best Tech, um, so which is actually the same knife that, or the same company that made the first knife, Best the Best Tech Man Ronin, and they are actually very similar. Um, it, just a really, really tight tolerances, really, really fidgety, and I really love this blade shape. Has a nice blade for piercing, but it's also not real dainty. Uh, razor sharp edge, sharp, attractive design lines, and some very nice micarta on these scale options. These are readily available a lot of places to my surprise. I, I thought this would be a giant mouse. It would be like really, really hard to get. And they have been selling. Like I see a lot of people post them, but they're still a lot in stock. They must have just made a lot of these ones. But I'm a huge fan of this. I actually, there's a, there's a natural micarta and stonewashed blade version um, that I actually prefer over this one. They're they're all great. Again, you're just kind of picking your favorite flavor at this point. Um, but that's available. I'll have all those linked, of course. But this is just a easily, easily one of the best giant mouse knives I've ever come across. Um, and I believe the only one with a crossbar lock. Really super enjoyable. Feels great. Looks great. Two hundred and twenty-five dollars. And I think some of them are a little more, but I think they start at two twenty-five, which is what this one was. Um, so yeah. Great, great knife, very fun, addictive action, and uh, yeah, very surprising offering from Giant Mouse. Next up is another Benchmade, and this is the Benchmade Mini Adamus. This guy is going to run you $261, and it's actually bringing us to our new price category of $250 to $300. There's only two knives in this price category, um, but yeah, $261 bucks for this guy. Um, you have a nice thick slab of CPM crew wear. Uh, really good ergos in my opinion. I like the ergos on this knife. You know, contoured micarta, uh, tank, absolute tank of a knife. Um, you can definitely use this one hard and bench made from what I've heard still has a very great warranty. So in case something happens to it, they'll take care of you. Um, so yeah, really nice offering here. $261 is kind of high, but I do still think it's reasonable for an American made knife of this caliber because I do think there's some really good fit and finish here, some good smooth action, um, an attractive blade shape, and just overall a very good execution of the baby brother of the regular full size Adamas. So, yeah, Mini Adamas. If you want to get into Benchmade, uh, this or the 940, especially, is one of the two that I would, two of my higher recommendations for Benchmade. But this one here in this price category, uh, this is definitely the one I would prefer, even though it really, in all honesty, does not have the best action. Uh, this is the TRM Shadow. What really just makes me love the Shadow is first the overall design I really love, but the ergos are so good on this. And you have a nice wide blade with CPM 20 CV. Uh, again, we're talking American made. Um, this is just on the other side of the country as to where Benchmade is over in Oregon. TRM is over on the East Coast, I believe in Massachusetts. I think Massachusetts. I'm pretty sure Massachusetts. Um, I might be wrong. There may be New Jersey. I can't remember. They're right over on the East Coast. Uh, but they make phenomenal knives. They're a little harder to get sometimes. These were actually in stock for quite a while. Uh, but they are now, I believe, currently out of stock. So they're one you kind of kind of got to keep a tighter eye on. Uh, but again, two hundred seventy nine bucks, two hundred seventy nine dollars for a knife of this caliber from a smaller company like TRM uh, is a really competitive price, and it's a price I really don't have any issue with. Um, really love the design; it carries great, fully recessed clip. Um, it really has a couple good grips, you know, the, the regular kind of choked back grip. And then this is more the regular grip. I feel like the knife was designed to be held like this, but you could actually move it back in the hand or move it forward or back, however you want to consider that. Um, it feels pretty good like that, but yeah, the choil here, the choil really does do wonders. It feels great. It looks great. The only issue I have with it sometimes is kicking it out. The separation of, or the space between the thumb stud and the pivot makes for a wide radius. So sometimes it can be a little hard to, you won't have quite the snappy action 
of deployment that you get with a lot of the other knives you just saw. Uh, partly because this is on washers, but it's also because the radius from the uh, from the thumb stud to the pivot is just so so wide. It's not. Uh, it's kind of a long, wider swipe for your thumb as to where some knives you just kind of pop up and the blade flies out. This one you really have to kind of get a little wrist and just kick it out. So still good action, just not phenomenal action like a lot of the other knives in this video. Um, but the actual studs for the crossbar lock are very easy to close the blade. So the closing action is actually very smooth. It's just deploying it. You got, you got to, it takes some time and takes some practice, but it's still, it really is still a phenomenal knife. And even though I don't carry it as much as some of these other knives, I don't think I'll ever sell it because I just, I really enjoy having this in my collection and it's just a great, great knife. And I think a pretty good value uh, for what it is, the TRM Shadow. Last up, we're already at the last knife and we are in the $300 plus dollar category. And we're going to end this one with a banger. This is the Tactile Maverick. Now, this guy here is Magna Cut Steel at 63 HRC. We have contoured titanium with all the milling. We have an excellent, well, it's an excellent clip that needs just a hair tweaking, in my opinion. But it's nothing that I'm going to really complain about in this video because it feels great in the hand, and I mean great. Um, it's a very nice design from Richard Rogers. It's it's gentleman, gentlemanly, but it's also kind of a bigger knife. Um, very, very, very smooth action. This one will take a little breaking in. I definitely had to break mine in, but man, oh man, once you get past that point of uh, kind of just loosening it up, sometimes take a little oil, maybe play with the pivot, but this is phenomenal. This is actually still a contender for Knife of the Year uh, for Wayne Sharp World for my Knife of the Year awards at the end of the year. Um, American made down in Texas. This guy is going to run you 350 bucks. But again, you get what you pay for. There's a lot of time. There's premium materials into this. This milling, this is all CNC machine time. And that's a decent amount of time. So that equates to money. And of course, Magna Cut with proper heat treating. You guys know the magic of Magna Cut. Um, this knife is fantastic. If, if you want, in my opinion, the most premium American-made knife with a crossbar lock, this is it. I do truly believe this is it. Um, really, really enjoy this. Um, I would steer people away from getting the, they have a micarta version that in my opinion is just a little too flexy, a little too flimsy in the handle. This titanium makes it nice and strong and sturdy and it, it feels like a $350 knife guys. It's, it's not one to where I feel like I'm getting uh, shorted at all on my money. Uh, you get what you pay for, and this, in my opinion, is worth paying for. So that's that. Let's take a look at the favorites from each price category. Let's start with this one because it's the only one. <laughs> the Tactile Maverick, and then uh, we are definitely going to go the Adamus in the 250 to 300. And next up in the 200 to 250, uh, yeah, I'm still not going to go with the with the 940. We're going to go with the, uh, the Ace Nazca there. And when it comes to the, ooh, the 150 to 200, this is actually really hard. I'm going to go with the Ritter RSK, uh, large RSK over the K320. I love the K320, but again, considering this version with magnet cut and carbon fiber, that's, that's one of my favorite knives in my collection. Um, next up in the 100 to $150, I really do love the Sheepdog and the Drop Bear, but I would be very hard-pressed not to go with the Hogue Decca in that category. And then in the $70 to $100 category, uh, very, very easy choice here. We're going to go with the Kaiser Escort. And then in the $69 and under category, this is actually a pretty easy choice too. Um, I would go with the Vostid Raccoon, and I would still go with the Raccoon even over the Best Tech Man Ronin. Uh, just because it'd, it'd be very close, but I do think the raccoon slightly, slightly, slightly edges out the best tech man Ronin. 
But again, that's one of the tougher decisions in this entire video. That's it, guys. These are a few of my favorites. The whole list are some of my favorite knives. Let me know what you think of this one. Do you prefer a button lock or a crossbar lock? Now that both of the videos out, I want to know your thoughts on that. Let me know. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a phenomenal rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.